Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, first off I simply want to say happy Easter for those of you who do celebrate, but even if again you're someone that doesn't, uh, maybe if you're a Animal Crossing fan, happy bunny day. Either way, I still hope you have a wonderful day today, and whether you celebrate or not, I want you of course to see this hilariously funny, super janky tech that I put together that is loosely based on the holiday. To put it another way, this tech is basically excellent. No. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Long time viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right into it. So as you can see, our teamer deck today is rocking, of course, blue, red, and green. We have an average mana curve of about 2.7. We're rocking 17 creatures total, 4 instants, 11 sorceries, 3 enchantments, and 25 lands. Now, originally, when I was putting this deck together, or at least trying to figure it out, I kept thinking in my head, what does Easter really mean to some people? Easter, the day Jesus rose from the dead. And that's when I thought, why not we do something fun? How about eggs? And with that, that is going to be, of course, the theme of our deck today. So as you can see right here, we're going to try to hatch as many eggs as possible in the hopes of kind of just making them go off and making a bunch of big dinosaurs to overwhelm our opponent and get to victory. So starting off, let's talk about the eggs that we're hoping to hatch and then create into more powerful creatures as part of our game plan. We have Dragon Egg in a 3-drop slot here. Ideally, this dragon here, if it dies, it can then turn into a 2-2 Dragon Creature token, then also has its own ability to pump its own power up to do some more damage in the air. Bioloom Egg here enters the battlefield and helps us scry, so it's great for fixing our next draws. And also, when it does get sacrificed, notice that it has to be sacrificed. It cannot just die in combat. But if it does this, then we can then flip it into Bioloom Serpent, which is a 4-4 Serpent, where if we sacrifice two islands, it can be unblockable. Ideally, you want Smoldering to flip, but you have to cast a bunch of instants of sorceries to do so. But if you have to then sacrifice it in a pinch just to make a dinosaur, that's perfectly fine too. Ideally, though, if you manage to flip it, it becomes a 4-4 Flying Dragon, where once you cast an instant or sorcery, the dragon will basically shock any target you like. Now, how exactly are we going to try to hatching all these eggs? Good question. Well, I'm glad you asked. So in the five drop slot here, we have Polini's Hatcher. You saw me play this a while ago if you saw my dinosaur tribal deck out there. But again, we're going to talk about this card one more time because this is, of course, the star of our show. Polini's Hatcher is a five mana, five, three dinosaur that reads, other dinosaurs you control have haste. When Polini's Hatcher enters the battlefield, you create two zero one green egg dinosaur creature tokens. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control one or more eggs, you sacrifice an egg, then create a three three green dinosaur creature token. So in other words, once you manage to then get some of your eggs out, you can then sacrifice them, create a dinosaur, and ideally, what's also even awesome as you just saw right now is you can then sacrifice some of these eggs, you get a dragon, and you'll get also a dinosaur in the process. So this is great value for us as long as we can get one of them to stick. How However, to make sure we have a little bit of a backup plan and to make sure we can create some more dinosaur tokens, we also have a single copy of Bone Horde Dragosaur. Again, we are a budget deck, so one copy is all we can afford. You see me play this card also as well. It's a flying first striker that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, you exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. If you exile the land card this way, you create a 3-1 dinosaur creature token. If you exile the non-land card this way, you create a treasure token. So this is awesome for us in the mid to late game to help us again keep drawing into more action, get us more dinosaurs, and get us more ramp to ensure that we can take advantage of our other main card here, the one that's going to make a hilarious amount of tokens, which is going to be Doppelgang. So if you haven't seen this card, this is an XXX green and blue sorcery that reads, for each of X target permanents, you create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. Woo! Sounds a little complicated, but in other words, for five mana, you create one token of one permanent. If you then cast this for more mana, you create two copies of two target permanents. And of course, it'll just keep multiplying from there. Obviously, I don't want to do the math right now. It's a little complicated, but basically, Basically, again, for each amount that you cast it for, it's going to be more and more ridiculous, and it can create some really hilarious board states if you manage, again, to resolve it. Now, as far as ensuring that we can cast these bigger spells off, because again, it's going to take us a while to get to these, we definitely need a ton of ramp. So that's where we round out the final part of the package. You have Bushwhack here for then searching for some basic lands. It also can be a great fight spell in a pinch if we need to in the mid to late game. You have Growth Spirals here for some more ramping and card draw and scale the heights here. Same thing, gain some life, put some plus one, plus one counters on a target creature, also can draw a card and gain a bit of life all for three mana. And then since we are a budget deck, we want to try to see if we can try to minimize tap lands as much as possible. But again, we have to work with what we got so i threw in of course one copy of spelunking just to work out for us same thing it can help us draw a card but also all of our tap lands come onto the battlefield 
untapped, which is really awesome for us and something I would highly recommend. Now, the final piece of the course of the whole puzzle is what if we make a giant board state, but we can't push through chump blockers? So with that, to solve that problem, we have two copies of Ferocity of the Wilds, which is also an awesome card. If you manage to actually cast it with, say, Doppelgang, you can also copy this to make a ton of extra copies of this enchantment to push out all of your dinosaurs doing extra damage. And of course, they can also have Trample. Now, speaking of the lands, as I just mentioned earlier, since we are a budget deck, we are, of course, only just going to rock with basics and tap lands. So we have islands, of course, your swamps, your forests. You have some swift water cliffs, rugged highlands, thornwood falls. And thankfully, of course, to Cons of Tarkir, we managed, of course, to get the cheaper versions of the Triomes, i.e. Frontier Bivouac here as your tap tri land. So it's going to really help us fix our mana in the early game. If you have to play this in best of three, if you're actually curious about it, here's again what I'm going to recommend for your sideboard. So you're going to want to use Make Disappear as your counter spell here. Really awesome because you have a ton of tokens you'll create with the deck. So this is great for us. You have some impact tremors here. If you want to go with the more go wide and just burn out the table kind of game plan, you can pull that off as well. And the festivities does look a little weak here. But again, this is mostly just for a lot of the other token decks out there that go wide strategies. Does it kind of soften up the board state and then force through some more damage with our creatures? You have Soul Guide Lantern as your catch all removal spell for graveyard hate atrox of course is your catch-all to the destroy anything that's an artifact enchantment or creature with flying sometimes again battles as well in a pinch and then finally if you have an opponent that's a, mostly a control heavy deck or maybe they're playing a ton of artifacts and enchantments and you want to bounce everything away filter out here is great if they're a can creature light so then you can bounce away everything and just have the board clear to do a bunch of extra damage with your creatures now, in terms of how to pilot the deck and how to make sure you can get the most out of it, even though it is a very janky meme style of deck, the best thing I can say for the deck is it's very easy to learn and it's kind of tough to master despite how it looks. The easy part of the deck is in the early game, ramp for days as much as you can so that way you can start casting your eggs on time. And this ensures that your Pelini's Hatcher can start hatching those eggs like your Bioloom and your Dragon Egg so that way you can double up on your creatures and go super wide to overwhelm your opponent. I mean, even though Smoldering Egg is going to be the one you don't want to sacrifice, if you have to do it in a pinch, by all means do so. The good news, however, is Smoldering Egg and Bioloom Egg, of course, can also block for days because they have a decent amount of toughness in the early part of the game. Having said that, one of the also best things and also one of the worst things about the deck also is Doppelgang is going to be a card you're really going to have to kind of mess with a bit and just understand the board state to see what is the best thing to copy. In some moments, you actually might be able to then copy a couple extra lands so that way your second Doppelgang can go insanely huge with the next cast. On the other hand, you might be forced into a moment where you're going to be stuck, say, you're going to have to cast only just double gang once. But the good news, of course, is remember that the target permanents don't have to be just yours. You can target your opponent's permanents. So as you see from the gameplay footage we've been showing throughout this video, if you've been kind of following, it's been one long <laughs> continuous game. And there's some moments you see where I've actually had to copy our opponent's creature, but that actually saved us and ensured that we can still get to victory and hold our own against a decks that really do tend to punch way higher than our deck can. So it does allow us to kind of keep up with some of the more meta decks out there. If you actually do want to play this in ranked, it's actually surprisingly quite more powerful than you can imagine. One of the other good things, of course, about the deck is if you can get that Doppelking to then go off and then get an extra couple of Polini's Hatchers, maybe a couple extra eggs in the process. Remember that, again, the best thing, of course, about that is with all those eggs hatching, you'll be able to have an immediate board state, an immediate threat against your opponent because your Pelini's Hatcher will turn those dinosaurs into hasty threats. And if you can get out at least one Ferocity to the Wilds, maybe if you're lucky enough to even copy that, you'll be able to overwhelm your opponent with a massive amount of creatures that your opponent will have a very hard time blocking, which is one of the best and most hilariously fun things about this deck. If by some miracle you can also flip Smoldering Egg, it goes off even crazier. I actually have a couple of little bit of gameplay footage I'm going to splice in right now that you can see where I was able to go off with one game and I'll kind of let it speak for itself for just a second.
Of course, that one footage took a while to do, but if you saw it, oh man, it was so satisfying to do that, so I had to throw that in there. But going back again to it, let's kind of wrap this up again with some of the weaknesses that I do want to acknowledge with the deck. Obviously, if your opponent can then just be super aggro against you, you're gonna have a bad time. We're talking about, again, Convoke decks out there, Mono Red Aggro. These decks most likely will then go under you far faster than you can then ramp, and that's, again, something that you're gonna have a tough time with. Even if you can get enough mana out by turn three or four to doppelganger at least once, you may not have a big enough board state to then just push back against your opponent. On the other hand, if you by some miracle can stabilize, you can then sometimes do a quick 180 against your some opponents out there, and they might have a hard time beating you down. One of the other biggest weaknesses, of course, of the deck is since we're so focused on trying to go as wide as we can and just keep hatching eggs, if your opponent has a lot of rats, you're going to have a bad time. Azorius Control, for example, is going to have a field day with you because they usually tend to run a lot of rats, so just be aware of that. But even if you can somehow survive some of the rats, as you see from the gameplay footage, we were able to somehow endure and rebuild our board state. So it's not impossible, it just might be a bit of a challenge. So just keep that in mind as you do play this deck if you are interested. Now, for those of you out there who are interested in upgrading a deck, to be perfectly honest, because this is more of a janky holiday-themed deck, I personally would not recommend upgrading this only, however, if you have a real passion for this style of deck so if you are still sticking around for that the only thing i would really just do is well honestly you could just upgrade the mana base and just kind of call it a day i i am really serious about that mostly just because these are basically the most optimized cards you can have for this deck anyway and i guess if you really want to you could trim away one rare or if you really want to, you could probably add in another copy of Bonehead Dracosaur. But then again, that's going to be personal preference, at least based on my testing and how this deck kind of felt overall. If at least one of these extra dinosaurs would help us again kind of fill out our deck and give us another plan B to the deck, besides if we cannot hatch any of our eggs. But as far as the actual upgrades in terms of the lands, all you'll simply just need to do is just trim down some of the basics, add in a Hall of Storm Giants, that gives you another backup option as a creature land. Castle Emberth here can pump up the whole team if you need to, and as always, besage you because this is just basically a staple if you're playing any of green deck here in Arena. As far as the actual dual lands, pretty much the simple things that you can always assume. You're just going to have, of course, all the shock lands. Remember that again, if you do have Spelunking out, you can then put them down untapped and you don't have to pay the two life cost that it would require if you want to come into play without the card itself. And then finally, Katria's Triumphs, also because these are not only just amazing if you manage to get that Spelunking, but even if you don't, these cards, of course, can cycle themselves away, which is really awesome for the deck. Aside from that, also, I honestly would not really change much of the sideboard. Again, it's going to come down to personal preference, and if you do want to play the deck, make sure to make, it, of course, those necessary adjustments as time goes on. Either way, your mileage will vary depending on however you want to take the deck. And with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Yes, as you saw, it is hilariously janky, and it's probably not going to get you that many wins, let's be real. But I still had a lot of fun doing it. And to be honest, I really thought we had more eggs actually in Arena, or at least in Magic in general, than I thought. But I guess I was wrong. Still, even with the small pool of creatures that we did have, we actually still managed to put together something that when it does go off, it is hilariously fun and surprisingly can overwhelm your opponent if they are not paying attention to what's going on. So to put it another way, if you are a fan of ramp, if you are a fan of hilariously janky combo tactics, if you're a fan of going wide out of nowhere with tokens that your opponent cannot even see coming, by all means, definitely give this check a try. And I assure you, whether you want to play this for the holiday or if you want to play it at any other time of the year, you're going to have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at what it is capable of. And as long as you keep your expectations low of the fact that you're probably going to lose more than win, when you do get those wins, it'll be so satisfying and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!